Rhymes TV. We are back with another sit-down interview, man. This is one of the artist spotlight uh, series interviews that we've been doing. Uh, we've done a few of them so far, and this is another one to add to that. Um, and this is a guy that's from Bama originally. Right. But is now in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Jordan Squires, man. What's up? This is a uh, this is a guy that I've been talking back and forth with, and he's been a supporter of mine for, for years, which I appreciate truly, bro. Yeah, man. Um, and he's doing it. He's an artist as well, and so we're going to sit down and we're going to get his story. He's got a dope story to tell. So we're going to kind of just do like we normally do, man. We're going to start from the beginning. Why don't you just – you can give the people kind of an idea. You want to introduce yourself and kind of let them know. Sure, yeah. My name's Jordan Squires. Mm -hmm. I'm from uh, Brookwood, Alabama. It's yeah. a small coal mining town. And uh, it didn't have a red light until I was about 13. Okay. A little bitty old town. But yeah. uh, blue-collar town, it was uh, definitely the have or the have-nots. Mm -hmm. Wasn't a lot of in-between down there. Yeah. And uh, – my dad was a coal miner. My mom worked at the hospital, and they, they were just salt to the earth people, really. Yeah. They were they was good people, and uh, and yeah, man, I just I played sports, like you were saying earlier. I played sports and all that stuff. I was a pretty good kid, really, coming up. As far as the music goes, my, I had an older brother. He's no longer with us. Rest in peace to your brother. Man. Yeah, amen. And uh, he was kind of like one of those just. OG white boy from the country, you know what I'm saying? Stayed in trouble, he really did. Yeah. And, um, but he always had, this is, now I was born in 84. Mm -hmm. It's back in the day now. So. Age, okay, yeah. yeah. So uh, he had cassette tapes. But my earliest thoughts of hip hop and rap and all that, uh, Justin had Bone Thugs on cassette. Yeah, he had Easy. Yeah. He had Snow, remember Snow? Yeah, Informer. Yeah, yeah had right. that, I played that for a million times. We all did, right, because we all was trying to figure out what he said. I know. With our own versions of what we thought he said. You're right, and he turns out, he's in, from like Boston? I think so, it's not, yeah, something like that. Yeah, right? he's not even like that kind of guy. Yeah. But it's cool, but uh, yeah. the Dog Pound, um, that was all my earliest memories. Uh, and then, as far as Alabama rap goes, uh, you ever heard of Jazz Real? Jazz Real, it sounds familiar. He's an old school Bama rapper, okay. and uh, you can have, you just have to find him. But he's yeah. out there, and like Birmingham J was popping. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Um, and that was later. Mm -hmm. But uh, first time I ever really started doing music was in the sixth grade. Uh, we were supposed to be taking notes, and I wrote a uh, Snoop rhyme. So much drum in the LBC is I have what I had wrote. Yeah. So I got sent to the office and all that because they wanted to know what LBC meant. And you're just writing lyrics <laughs> and right? Yeah. Yeah. So that was the uh, my intro to my love for hip hop, man. And uh, I heard Broadneck say something on the interview. He said something like, uh, "He couldn't have been from a place that frowned upon it more." Yeah. Well, that was the same for me, man. Oh, I'm sorry, I hit your mic. Oh, you good, you good. Uh, I mean, I didn't have a lot of supporters. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But the ones I did, that they were good. They were good to me. Yeah. So, we're, uh, so that was the early on. So I move up, jump up. Yeah, yeah. So like, okay. So going back to your, uh, going back to like childhood, and you talking about your brother. Was was your brother was was he somebody that you always wanted to be like, or what was around all the time, or did you did y'all have a real close relationship? On okay. and off. On and off. Okay. Uh, he was about three years older than me, and uh, yeah. we were close when we were real little. But during his teenage years, you know, he was, he was he was out there. He was out there. Yeah. And I played sports, basketball, and uh, a little bit of football and stuff. And uh, so I didn't really see him a lot in that in that time. And uh, as far as uh, my addiction goes, yeah. th this this will roll into that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I got out of high school, right? And mm -hmm. uh, and Dad wanted me to do some form of higher education. He didn't care if it was welding, doing a whole four-year degree, whatever it was. Yeah. We, we wasn't rich kids, but you know what I mean? Yep. We didn't want for nothing either. Yep. So I just, I found, I was working at Ruby Tuesdays in a restaurant. We'd always be back there freestyling and joking around, you know. Mm -hmm. I had a, you remember Mix Magazine? The Mix Magazine, uh, it sounds familiar too. Well, it's an old magazine. Well, I was flipping through it and I found a little bitty article about that big in the back that said the recording workshop of Chillicothe, Ohio. And I asked dad, could I go to that? And he, he was down for it. So I went to that, got out of that in 03. That tells you how old I'm getting. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I come back home, 
and uh, I'm just making music. I'm stuck out there in Alabama. I don't, I'm not gonna lie, it took me a long time to get here because I was scared. It was, I mean, fear and the microphone don't go together. Right, for sure. You know what I'm saying, so. Was you just afraid of um, people saying you weren't any good? Or was yeah, it just, it was another one? Okay. for sure. You know what I'm saying, because uh, I mean, I'm from a little bitty mount down in Alabama. I don't know. I don't know nobody up here. I mean, I just met you today. Yeah. And um, so we were just making music. I had little pop-up studios all over the place. Single wide trailers, yeah, yeah. friends, basements. Yeah. All, I mean, we was everywhere. But we was out in the country burning discs. Mm -hmm. uh, well, then the addiction came. We started uh, eating lure tabs and selling them, yeah. doing the OCs, the real ones. And, uh, this is mid 2000, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It started. That started probably about 2004. Yeah. And uh, it just. Uh, I was still making music and stuff during all that time, mm -hmm. but some of it was sloppy. Some of it was good. Some of it wasn't. And I remember I had this Korg D1600 recorder, Chad. It would hold a hundred songs. And I had filled it all the way up and put all those on CDs, then deleted everything and filled it back up. It was just, some of it was junk. Well, me and my cousin wanted two OC-80s. And I'm not glorifying this at all. Right, right, yeah. For anybody it's watching this. Story, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, I was in my mid-20s, so we went and pawned it in Bessemer, Alabama. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we got like 120 bucks. This thing was worth probably 1000 at the time. And uh, we went and got our pills. And I would literally go to that pawn shop, Chad, and just look at it through the glass. It still had my tape on it, and like where you know separate the tracks, and I would just look at that thing all the time, and I couldn't get it back. I couldn't afford it. I couldn't tell my dad. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when they gave you 120 for what? What were they trying to sell it for? In there? Like seven. Yeah. Eight. And um, so this this went on for like a year or two, maybe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And uh, but I had a other way to record too though. You know, but uh, one day I went back and it's just gone. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so I lost uh, about a hundred songs there. So, uh, and I was like that kind of addiction person. Like, I would dabble just enough to keep me fucked up. Yeah. Couldn't get a good job. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so I just kind of like ran the streets, cut grass, made music. Then I got, then I went down that suboxone path. Adderall, all that stuff, and uh, and I always wanted to come up to Tennessee to connect with these guys. You know, this is like the white, the white boy rap mecca. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of white boy rappers that have been, that, yeah, for sure. For real, yeah, and yeah, I always sure. wanted to get here, and it's just always felt like it was so out of reach for me. Yeah. You know, I don't know nobody up here, and this took 20 years to get to this this point, and this, and I'm still working. Yeah. And uh, I got a long way to go, but anyway. So, fast forward a little bit, if you don't yeah. mind. So, uh, a lot of stuff went on and stuff. So, I went, then my, my brother died. Mm -hmm. So, I was going to, let me tell about that a little yeah, bit. Bro. Yeah, whatever you want to talk about. All right. Uh, so, I go down there to uh, get him one one morning. I actually went down there the night before. I couldn't ever get him to a store. He's staying in a little single while I tried with this other girl. It was a mess. Yeah. And uh, I finally... Finally went back down there the next morning. It was uh, on a Monday. We was going to go get a script Adderall. I'm going to keep it all the way 100. No, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And I couldn't get him to the door. So I started banging on windows and stuff. And I just had this real eerie, messed up feeling. Was he was he on, in, doing drugs as well? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. bad. Yeah. He was a big zany okay. taker. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so finally I was about to leave and hit girlfriend. Uh, opened, swung the door open and, and uh, hollered at me, and I went in there. And I've told this story in church, but never like like this. But anyway, uh, and he was sitting there, just basketball shorts on, bamboo shorts, and he was just gone. You know what I mean? And uh, Chad, that really spun me out bad. Of course, brought your brother, dog. Yeah, and him. yeah, and that really messed me up for about a year, man. I went down a real dark road, you know, snorting stuff. You know how it goes. Yeah. And, uh, was that how you, was you just taking them normal before and then you started to, no, I snorted, however you, whatever. Yeah. I snorted them, yeah. you know, and, uh, well, anyway, 
I kind of, me and my dad got in a couple of fist fights. Mm-hmm. And I'm not real proud of that. You were, just, you were just gone. I was gone. Yeah. It's like 130 pounds. I'm already skinny. I ain't got no way to lose. Yeah. And uh, so I ended up getting locked up twice in the same year. For, it's just like the little domestic violence charge because me and my dad was scrapping. Yeah. And then I, I, was, I was stuck in the county. And uh, so the only way I could really get out and make that situation go away, I had to go to a mandatory like eight month rehab, mm-hmm. a Christian discipleship program, is what they call them. Yeah. So I go there and uh, that, that really helped me. I met my wife, going to Murfreesboro. Yeah. That's, that's the, the cliff note version of all that, but. So you want to speak on, cause I think you should, another thing you should speak on too, when, do you want to speak on how you met your wife and how that? Sure. You can talk about that. Yeah. Uh, so when I got to this place out in Tuscumbia, Alabama, North Alabama, around Muscle Shoals, out in the middle of nowhere, I was sick, dog. Uh, full disclosure, uh, I had scabies from mm-hmm. the county. Had oh, it. from when you was locked up? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's that other one called? Like Impentigo? I'm not sure. I, I may have said that wrong. I'm country, y'all. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, forgive me. Uh, but I didn't really realize it the first week I was there. So I finally went to the office, and they they got me cleaned up and stuff. But um, but I was just skinny, and my wife was already there. She had been there about three or four months before me. Mm-hmm. And she was there on some other stuff, like getting her kids and doing the right thing. Yeah. And uh, you could not fraternize up in there. You know, but I slipped her my number towards the end, and we just kind of connected. And she lived up here in Murfreesboro, and uh, she told me one day when I got out, I was in Alabama, I needed to get my shit together and move up here. What she told me, I swear. And I was yeah. like, bet. So I, th- uh, this can go into another little story. Yeah, that's fine. Look, when I when I first moved here, Chad, I got hired on through Express Temp Agency, making fourteen dollars an hour, living in a hotel for almost a month, mm-hmm. working and stuff, working, 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 worked at Clockner Metals. Uh, didn't record at all the first three years I was up here. And uh, I just kept climbing, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, and now I'm doing all right. I got, I'm got. i still on that clock full time. Yeah. So, uh, and now I'm making almost $30 an hour. Well, that's awesome, man. Yeah. yeah. I think that's, uh, my dad asked me what my objective was with this. One, of course, is to push my music. Right. You know what I'm saying? I got another album coming out. Those other two were kind of like rough drafts, you know. Yeah. But, uh, but anyway, uh, and I want to inspire that kid that grew up down a dirt road in the middle of asshole Alabama or Nebraska or New Mexico, wherever, yeah. that likes to do this. Yeah. Of course, it's a lot easier now. Yeah. That it's possible. It's not easy. No, not at all. It's very hard. It's a lot, e- I'll say this, it's a lot easier to make music now, but it's a lot harder to get seen because so many people are doing it. Right. Is that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's easy to upload a, a song to the internet now, and but the fact of so many other millions of people are doing it, so that there's kind of a, a yin and a yang to that. Right. Now, I definitely see what you're saying, though, as far as, the, you know, motivating. And then, so y'all... Y'all ended up meeting each other in rehab when she was trying to get her stuff together just like you were. Yeah. And then when she got out, y'all were still talking. She was like, you need to come up here. Right. Yeah. So when you moved here and everything, how, how did everything go when you first moved here? Uh, it was hard. Ho- had you adjust to, you know. It was hard. I'm not going to lie, but it was actually the best thing I ever done in my life. Um, it was a fresh start. I had, I didn't go back to my Egypt, how they say biblically, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. and, uh, I was excited. I was clean. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had put on weight. Um, uh, I, I, I still have me a drink. Don't get me wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, I got off, I freaking kicked the pills. How long have you been off now? Going on about five years. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Did you, um. Did, when you when you originally got off of the pills, did you have to do the Suboxone and Subutex stuff first, and then? Oh no, 
You just said. No. When I come out of rehab, I was done. And you never? I've slipped. Okay. Well, that's, that's fine. Yeah. Everybody does, bro. Yeah. I, I'm not going to sit up. Pre- I'm not going to stand on my soapbox and act like I hadn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm an old school cat. I, I, I'll be honest. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've slipped here and there, and I probably drank too much sometimes. But the opiates don't have that grip on me. Yeah, because they definitely get that grip on you, man. They right. Everything, man. Pay my bills. Yeah. I can buy groceries for my kids. Yeah. You got three kids, right? Yeah. Yeah, man. That's cool. Heck yeah. Um, how do they, how, so you said it was hard at first moving here, but now, you know, you've been here a while and you've been able to move out doing what you're doing, which can help you provide for the family and help you also fund, like, the music and what you're trying to do and what you're trying to. Right. Because it. You know, unfortunately, that's just kind of how everything is, man. Yeah. You know, and that's dope that you've been able to, you know, start out of the temp agency living out of a hotel. Now you're doubling that. You, you've got your own place. Um, and that's that's a testament, bro, to, yeah. to show that you can, you can do, you can have all those issues that you have and feel like you're in a dead end part of the world, a dead end life. Right. And fit and somehow figure out a way to get out of it to where you've got a, you, I'm not saying your life is peaches and cream, but like no. you've got a life now that's stable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and all that stuff. So like, that's, that's very commendable, bro. Cause it's, you know, you know, like I do, we saw, I'm sure you saw a lot of people or know people. Once you get on them pills, man, some people will never get off of them. Oh, I know. You know, they take them to the grave. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, and since I've been here, uh, my cousin killed himself. My other cousin o- overdosed, and my best friend overdosed. I had to go speak at his funeral, uh, like last Fourth of July. And this was all back in Alabama. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a. Uh, I don't want to trash on it too bad because I'm from that t- that place. Oh yeah, yeah. But there's just not a lot. You said there was one light. Available. Right. Uh, yeah. And there's not a lot of options. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You just sit around. I know, bro, because I'm not from the town I'm from. It's damn near in Kentucky, but it's it's only a couple of lights. There's not a lot popping there either, man. Right. And when you ain't got a lot going on, especially when you graduate high school and you don't have that distracting you. Right. I mean, bro, there's been so many people that I know that I graduated with, and then people that I know through other people that have died. Because of drugs, especially yeah. the last three years. Oh, I know, I know. Fentanyl and all that stuff, man. It's uh. It's ridiculous. It, it's it's wild seeing, and, and it sucks because so many people are lost in that sauce, man, and they just can't. Some of them can't find their way out. They can't get out of their own way, and some of them I don't think want to. Yeah, for sure. Because you gotta want to. For sure. Yeah, you gotta want to, and uh, I didn't mean to cut you off, no, Chad. Uh, but yeah. Like, I wish my brother could have seen that there's another side of life. Mm-hmm. Because, I'll be honest with you, Chad, I, I, didn't, I didn't ever think this was obtainable for me, just sitting in this house like we're doing right now. Yeah. And, um, but all that being said about the drugs and fentanyl, it kind of led into that song I let you hear. Yeah. I know it's rough. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if I should speak on who's on it right now. Or, yeah, well, I mean, it, whatever you think, you, you got some you got some stuff in the works with some dope artists. Right. Yeah, for sure. Right. Um, and me saying that to you was just me being constructive, like, because I, I, want, I want you to be able to take that kind of credit, criticism, because I'm not ever going to tell you anything to, to hurt, to deliberately hurt your feelings. Oh, I know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And some people can't. You did you took the criticism the way you should, just like I would. Right. If somebody told me that. But... You wouldn't, I mean, you, there's been so many people that get offended when you try to tell them, man, I think you should work on this or. Right. And. And, and I know that, but I tell you what, uh, when he did finally get, get that back to me, uh, yeah. I was proud of that, man. No, it's dope, bro. Ain't it? And yeah, uh, like, I, I feel like I pulled something out of him special. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. We, ain't, I mean, look, I love the hardness. I love all that. I'm yeah. with it. Yeah. But uh, sometimes, you know, I might need to shed a tear and get that. Get that off of us. No, for sure. Right. That's and that's what uh, that's what Broadneck says a lot. We I just when I just went to interview him again, that's what he was saying, man. He said I need to get this 
get this stress and stuff off of me. And that's right. how I get it off of me in the booth. Because, you know, doing what we do, man, like you, that's our therapy. 90% of I say 99% of us don't go to a therapist. Uh, as we all probably should. For sure. Because especially being an artist, you're already troubled. Yeah. You're already fucked off, you know what I mean? Yep. With whatever it may be. And that's the way to be. The microphone is therapy. You know what I mean? Even if it's just to where you can say, even if it doesn't get out there to as many people as you'd like, the fact that you can get it off of you and say it and talk about it, people that aren't artists may not understand it, but from from each other, we know how that works. Yeah. You know, and a lot of the times, if you don't, that's when you start to get fucked up mentally. Yeah. Because it's all that stuff that you can't work work itself out of you. Right. You know? And even sometimes uh, you can't get it out on the mic. Yeah. You know, some I man, I'll be in there right sometimes, Chad, and I just feel like, oh, you know, just I just oh, yeah, sure. then I'll just get on there and just start doing something. Yeah. You know, it's like I got my my mind's just going da 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 all the time with these words and the ideas. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, you're right, man. Like, I just want to reach. I want people to hear my music. I want to reach somebody. Mm-hmm. I want to inspire somebody. You know what I mean? And the mental health aspect of it, I don't care, Chad, if I don't get any subscribers. Yeah. You know, I ain't doing it. I don't care if I won't ever get a bag. It'd be nice. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, but, uh, but yeah, I do this because I love it. I've been doing it since I was a kid, really. Yeah. And, uh, and I think I'm pretty good at it. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and if you don't have that type of mentality with doing hip hop and rap, you're not going to be good at it. At all. No, for sure. And, and that, doing it, saying what you just said, that's the way it should always be. You should always, first and foremost, you should always want to do it because you love doing it. Now, obviously, you know, as things progress, stuff, money coming with it, of course that would make it better. But ultimately, your first reason should always be because this is what I love doing. Because yeah. if you don't love it, if you're not doing it because you love it and doing it because you're trying to make money, it's the wrong way to go about it. Yeah, it's kind of like being a con artist. Yeah. You're still an artist. Yeah. But you're just doing it for the bag. Yeah, no, for sure. And yeah. There are some people out there that do it just for the money, and I, I salute to them. But at some point, you have to love. You have to still love it first. I think. Yeah. At least my perspective. You know. Uh, but then there's some people that start out doing it before they, because they love it. And then once the money comes, then it's not about the love. It's about the money. Yeah. And I understand that too. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It, uh, it helps. Yeah. It for sure helps, man. And uh, But, yeah, I, I, I definitely want to work with some more artists up here in Tennessee and maybe some other artists back in Alabama. Mm-hmm. But uh, like my dad always told me, when you want to get in this business, you better bring your wallet with you. Yeah. For sure. And uh, that's unfortunately just the way it is, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's just, yeah. it's, it's just equi- I just equivalent it to if you want somebody, it's the same kind of thing as if you want somebody to come and do some work on your home. Or Amen. Your car. Yeah. It's all that same thing, like um, doing what you do if somebody's wanting to need you to do. What did you say you, you do? Uh, I'm a machine operator. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, see, so like, it's, it's the same thing, like with that, like with their, whatever it is that you do. It's got to be, that obviously has to be something involved with it too because that's how they they make a living as well. So it's kind of, right. like, you know what I mean? Well, they're paying you to be there. Yeah. And when I'm at work, that's the, I yeah. get what you're saying. Yeah. For sure. I got to work, yeah. you know, or kick rocks. Yeah. Same way, and, uh, and I've had a lot, I mean, I, I'm sure you've encountered this, like make a beat for somebody or something, and they'd be like, well, can you make me another beat? I'm like, well, I just made that one. You know what I mean? And you yeah, yeah. get called in that little weird lingo uh Yeah, I've never been able to have patience to make beats, but I, right. for artists, I've done, back in the day, I've done songs for people, I've done features for people. This was back before I even charged for features. And back then I would do them, and then they would, I've had a couple of people that were like, well, let's do another one, which was cool, but like, and I see what you're saying. You're right. Yeah, it's saying. like, hey, man, we got to, uh, let's, let's try to see this one through, see what happens, mm-hmm. and... uh and then go from there. I try not 
these days. You know, I took a five year hiatus, by the way. Okay. Uh, like when my brother passed, mm -hmm. like, I don't know if you looked at my Spotify. I just threw two things up there. Mm -hmm. And I really done that just to uh, see, learn how to do it. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. But uh, I try these days, now that I'm more clear headed, not all the way, but more. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like I try not to sit on a beat too long. Mm -hmm. Like then you're just chasing it. Yeah. You know, and you're chasing the song. I got all kinds of stuff in there that's like got a hook and a verse. Because mm -hmm. once you get that high, go to the next one. Yeah. Hook and a verse. You know, I got to get better at seeing my stuff all the way through yeah, yeah. to the end. You know? That's what I've. For me, the way I've always recorded, man, is, is if I don't finish a song, or at least finish all the parts I want to the song, and then if I'm sending it to somebody else or something, but if I don't finish my song all the way, I won't start another one because I used to do that. Same thing you did. Yeah. Where I'd have seven songs with a hook and a verse, or this just has a verse, or this just has a hook. And now I'm sitting with seven unfinished songs right. instead of having two finished ones. Two know? bangers. Yeah. Right. So, like... I had to find. I had to train myself to 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 go the other way as far as how I record. Right. But some people can do it that way too. It's, it's right. a reference thing, but it just doesn't work for me. It drives me crazy if I do it that. Well, way. That, this conversation it'll roll into like me telling you on text like that. I need that tribe. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I need that community. Yeah. Uh, like I got a homie that lives uh just right around the block. He's from Georgia. He come over, but he don't come over. We're both working. Yeah. It's like I told him the other day, I can't do this by myself. Iron sharpens iron, you know. Yeah. My wife's going to, I can only hear my wife tell me that's good so many times. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've, you've got, that's another thing if you want to do this thing. Yeah. I've, fortunately, I've done it for a long time, mm -hmm. so I can maybe get around it, but I need it desperately. Yeah, yeah. The tribe, yeah, yeah. the community aspect. Yeah. Somebody like you or Squint saying, hey, Jay, that sucks. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. And, uh. But at the same time, keeping it all professional as well. Like, uh, I also feel like, you know, I told you the name of my album. I'm going to call it the Sloppy Album. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a double meaning. Yeah. I've recorded some of it, Sloppy Drunk. Yeah. And it's in my closet. Yeah. This is the last one I'm going to do like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's why yeah. I'm calling it the Sloppy Album. Yeah. And that's my exit from that format. Yeah. It's like the closet, so like the bedroom studio. You're right. Yeah. You know, uh, I can make my beats in there all day. Yeah. You know, but I need a, a booth to go get mm -hmm. somebody over there hitting my buttons, telling me to do, redo something. That's important. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So, uh, to anybody out there, you've got to be part of a tribe or a community. And, uh, and a lot of that, too, you can get, too, just from when you start uploading more on the, um, your socials and stuff to kind of get a feel of what people like and don't like and what to do and not do and stuff like that. So, yeah. that always helps. Visual. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I've never done a video. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, but it's kind of uh, nerve-wracking stepping out of that studio. No, I get it, especially when you're not used to being in front of the camera. And stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm so used to it because I've done it for so long that it's easy for me to say, oh, I ain't no big deal, man, because that, that's like somebody telling me, Chad, get up to the top of that roof and look down because I'm terrified of heights. Right. right. But if you're not and you're like, man, that ain't no big deal. I'll, I'll jump off this. I'll jump off the roof. Off you're right. You know? Right. But I'm up there like terrified. Right. It's the same thing to somebody that's like, like for you, like, like if you're not used to being in front of the camera, that's a fear, not a fear, but like something that makes you nervous. And it doesn't, it's, it's the same type thing. It's just different fears. Right. You know? Right. You got to overcome that. Yeah. But yeah, that's, I definitely want to move forward with that. I got a good friend. I sent you that link, Lance Holloway. Mm -hmm. He's uh he done Parker McCollum's wedding not long ago. Oh, oh, oh the, the video guy you said. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. yeah. He done his uh wedding. Yeah. Uh, he, he's he's very good. Yeah. He does all of like the Alabama stuff and uh, but I can only pull so many favors from him. But I grew up with him. Yeah, yeah. So it's cool. Right. But uh, I want to get with him. Shout out, Lance. Yeah, man. Uh, but yeah, uh. I'm, I'm debating on putting that out there with that feature. I think I'm going to sit on that one for a little bit. I would. I'd get it, I'd get it right because it's going to be a dope one when you get it finished. Right. Not even tell sure. nobody. Because yeah. uh, this sloppy album is going to be like, the, I would like to get, work with you. I got to get my money right. Uh, I really like Marcotic. Marcotic's dope, man. He's dope, man. I love, I love his voice, man. Yeah, yeah. 
And I got I got a beat that I think he would sound real good on because I think me and him were completely different in tone. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure, for sure. He's got the more like the higher pitch. Like he's got that more like the, you know like he's like the, the he's like a white boy Boosie. Like, yeah. I know he gets told out all the time. And I hope that don't. I love Mark. I guess my dog. Right. But like that's kind of a way to compare him. Just like people say, I sound like Bubba Sparks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel so you. It's shout Bubba. So it's like that. It's just something that kind of has a reference point. Uh, but Mark Hoddy's doing his thing, man. Yeah, he is. I was, at, I was blessed to be on that uh, project he just dropped, uh, The Hungover on Mud and Whiskey, which is a dope-ass album, 25-song album. Um, but, yeah, man, that'd be dope. If you yeah, I know. It. You know who I always thought he reminded me of? Like a Yellow Wolf. For sure, Yellow Wolf, too. I've heard that, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At first, that's I was... Bama, that's the Bama guy. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, uh, I've never met Yellow Wolf. Uh, of course, he's on with another stratosphere. Right. He was from a little bit of a different area. I didn't hear about him until uh, after he had had a song with I think Bun B, and a, a guy from Missouri told me about it. I I didn't even hear him buzzing in my state. Right, really? Okay. Yeah, I think he 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 uh, he did early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which uh, I didn't. Right, gotcha. You feel me? No, yeah. And uh, we just as my my dad told me not long ago, he said, "Son, you know, I didn't take the interstate to here. I took the back roads to get where I'm at." Yeah. Sit, sitting here talking to Chad Arms. Yeah. The like the way back roads. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but yeah, I like uh, I guess we can talk about. I love Broadnax. Yeah. Uh, Don Tripp. Oh yeah. I listened to all his stuff yesterday at work. Oh man, he's so dope, bro. His content. So dope. Yeah. Such no. a good, such a cool dude too, man. We were super blessed. Shout out to Logan Garrett. That's his manager. He manages him and Starlino, but. And grind hard, but for him to come through the podcast was a blessing, dog. Because yeah. he was just in town doing a press run, and we didn't know him. And he came in there and chopped it up with us like he knew us. He was super cool. Yeah, dropped gems on there. I mean, yeah, he did. He was. Uh, yeah, he's a good dude, man. I'm just glad to see. I've been listening to him since Letter to My Son in 2010. Yeah, and to see him where he's at now is so dope because he's such a, a dope artist. And I like that he doesn't conform. Right. You know what I mean. And he's got uh, good content. Yeah. He talks sure. about real stuff. Like I heard him say, uh, he goes, if you listen close, you can hear my infant on yep. some of the tracks. I got the same thing. Yeah. I might have sent you one. Had I think uh, I sent one to somebody the other day, and I, I could hear Sarah, my wife, saying, get in the shower. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. I was like, man, that's, but I love that. Yeah. That's what makes it good. That's why this, I'm calling it the sloppy album. Yeah, for sure. You know? No, I see what you're saying. No, the trip definitely said that one of his songs. But that's that's cool, man. Well, I, um, and obviously too with these Chat Arms interviews, um, the Chat Arms TV subscribers that check this out, we'll make sure to have all your your, your links um, to where they can check you out and follow you on there, um, and get get you some feedback on some stuff that you put up. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, it, it, I think this has been a dope because uh, we're I mean, we're at thirty five minutes. All right, man. This has been a dope uh, introduction to you. As not I'm just forget an artist, just as a as a person with a story. Amen. You know, so you're somebody that that, that comes from nothing. I won't say nothing. Just Come, nowhere. No, comes from nowhere. Sorry about that. Yeah. I mean it like that. Yeah. I feel comes it. from nowhere, um, with not a lot of options. Right. You know, to be able to beat a drug addiction and and. and Meet the, the your wife and the mother of your kids, and then y'all got a nice thing going here, in a in a in a cool little spot, and you're able to do what you love to do, provide for your family. Amen. You know what I mean? That, that you can't. I mean, it's the American dream, really, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, everybody wants more all the time. Bro. Sure. I, I told myself this, and I can tell you this before we get done. I always told myself because I did. I've been doing. I've been met rapping since 2003. 20 years, right? I've never rapped for a living up until two years ago. Oh, wow. It took 18 years of me making hardly anything. And then just a lot of songs me and Jelly did back in the day finally started hitting. Yeah. Jelly took off. You know what I'm saying? But, and then the chat on TV stuff we've been doing since 2009, but it took 20 years, bro. Yeah. You know? And, and I told myself, if I can make enough at what I was making at my job, I'll be happy. Amen. And I started making more than that, and I'm like, I'm not happy. 
Yeah. I'm, I'm happy, but I'm not satisfied. Right. Because we right. always want more. Yeah. You know what I mean? For sure. But the, the, the blessing is that you're able to do what you love to do. You're able to provide for the family. Right. And you can't, I mean, as long as the family's doing good and you've been able to do what you like to do, you can't ask for much more than no. that, man. You we're we're going to keep pushing. Else is just icing on the cake. Man. Right. It's just extra. Especially coming from what you come from and beating what you beat. You know what I mean? I think this is a, this, I think that your story is dope, but I think this is a good uh, way to present it to the people. With the artist spotlight series that we do on these, it's cool because people can, that may not know you at all, can at least see who you are as a person. Right. And, and what you believe in and what you, what you overcome before they go tap into the music. Yeah. To where they don't have a judgment of you before knowing who you are. No Does doubt. Sense? Yes, sir. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, again, man, I appreciate you for, for Thank reaching you, out, man. I appreciate the support. Yeah, man. And um, I hope that this can help push you to keep doing what you're doing and to improve on what you're doing. Because ultimately, that's what we're all trying to do is improve on what we're already working for, on. For sure. Whatever it may be. Yeah, and, and maybe... Uh, and just, I'm just thankful that I can be considered a part of a tribe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, just thank you, Chad. I appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, man. Thank you, brother. Thank you, man. That was dope. And um, again, y'all be sure to hit the subscribe button. And um, be sure to follow follow him on all of his platforms. We'll put, we'll, I'll get you some of the links that you want me to put in here. All right. And then um, y'all be sure to tap in with him. He's working on that new album. Um, Jordan Squires, man, and again, bro, I appreciate you, man, and this has been the Chat Hours TV Artist Spotlight Series, man, and thank you once again, bro. Thank you. And um, keep grinding, dog. Yes, sir. Keep Let's grinding. get it.